Hello, everyone. My name is Sun Nguyen, and I am the National Manager of NRA Clubs and Associations and Range Services Department. I want to thank everyone for joining us today. This afternoon, we'll be discussing one of NRA's programs that the youth can participate in. It's called the Youth Hunter Education Challenge, which we commonly refer to here at NRA as YHEC. We do encourage everyone in this webinar to ask questions. So um, you'll see a question box in your control panel. I believe it's somewhere on your right-hand side. So if you have a question at any point during this webinar, feel free to use it. Just type in that question, and we'll be glad to help you out and answer that type of that question. Today, our speaker is Mr. Monty Embry. He is the manager of the NRA YHEC program. Monty, you want to give a brief intro introduction of yourself and let everyone know what YHEC is and what updates uh, we have for them? Yeah, thanks, Sun. I sure will. Um, as Sun said, my name is Monty Embry. I am the manager of the Youth Hunter Education Challenge Program, or YHEC as we'll refer to it today. Um, I've been at NRA for just about 21 years, and I've been involved with the program since I've been here um, at all levels. And today we're here to talk about the YHEC program, to inform people about the program, because we do have some listeners that have, are not familiar with the YHEC program. And we're also going to go over updates for 2019. Um, people that have been involved in the program, have been considering the program, um, have had a lot of questions. We've done a few changes, some updates, um, more incentives for people that host events in 2019, and I want to bring everybody up to speed with that. <clears throat> a little about the YHEC program. YHEC was created in 1985. Um, the first YHEC event was conducted at Remington Game Farms in Chestertown, Maryland. Um, we've had over 1.25 million participants since its inception. Um, it was designed to promote the continual development of hunting skills and encourage safe, lifelong hunting. Um, the reason NRA started the YHEC program, um, we had lots of members and non-members alike contacting us years ago um, about what they could do or what their kids could do after they'd been through their state um, hunter safety program. As we all know, the state hunter safety programs are outstanding. They do a great job, but it's mostly basic. And uh, people were looking for something more, something for their kids to get involved in to teach them more, um, make them safer hunters in the field, and just broaden their, um, their knowledge of hunting itself. Um, so NRA came up with this program. It's designed to simulate real life situations encountered while you're hunting in the field. Um, and we'll talk about that later. We, we encourage people to set these up like you're in the field. Um, that's not always possible. It depends on what facilities are available where the uh, event is being hosted. And an interesting fact about YHEC, um, we survey the kids that participate from time to time, and 79% of YHEC participants have purchased a hunting license in their home state. And uh, people that are involved in youth programs, um, especially in the hunting or shooting field, that's a very high number. Um, kids that get involved in this program normally stay in this program through their entire um, longevity or the entire time they're allowed in the program. After 18, they age out of the program. Um, the YHEC, a full YHEC event has eight events in it four shooting and four responsibility events. Um, local and state events only require one shooting and one responsibility event. So we encourage beginners, people doing their first time event to not overload themselves, do not do too many events at one time. You're gonna be dealing with volunteers that have never done the program and you're, the host has never conducted an event. So it's easier if you only do two, three or four events to start Unless you have a great group of volunteers and you're used to running events like this, um, then you could step up and do all eight events if you're comfortable with that. Uh, events oh. normally typically expand one day. Um, we do have a few that are two-day events and a couple that are three-day events in the country. But the majority are done in one day. 
Amani, um, you mentioned that p for people hosting a YF event for the first time, do they need any type of background uh, to host this event, or can anyone host that? Anybody can host a YHEC event. Um, they don't have to have any specific background. Um, we do encourage them to have experience, obviously, in hunting and the shooting sports. And uh, generally, when somebody volunteers to host an event, they do have that, or they have a good group of people around them supporting them that have that knowledge. Uh, but we do not have any specific requirements to host a YHEC event. Is there a minimum? Is there a minimum age? Or suggest a minimum age for 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 youth that participate. There, we do not set a minimum age. Um, at a state event, they must have hunter ed, and there are some states that have a minimum age for hunter ed. Um, we do have some events that do set a minimum age. Um, they're they're they can do that if they would like, if that's what they're comfortable with. But NRA does not set a minimum age. I have been to numerous events where we had eight-year-olds come up and shoot as well or better than the 16 and 17-year-olds. So it depends on the level of the young person, the child. The parents make that decision. If they're comfortable with them attending an event, they obviously must be able to safely shoulder and handle a firearm, um, then they're welcome to come as far as NRA is concerned. If there is a legal issue where they have to be a certain age in that state, then that will govern um, the minimum age. Maximum age is 18. Um, once they basically, normally, once they get out of high school um, or turn 19, then they are no longer eligible to participate in the YHEC program at a um, competitor or participant level. But they can volunteer, and we do encourage them to volunteer. We're always looking for good volunteers. Uh, there are four shooting events in the YHEC program um, 22 rifle or rifle event. It's uh, shooting a 22 rifle, and you can use scope or non-scope, and it's shooting action style or life side game targets. Um, action type targets are spinning targets, knockdown targets, things like that. Um, life size game targets, we will provide those at no cost to the host. Um, we have game targets from squirrels and rabbits and groundhogs all the way up to antelope, whitetail, and mule deer. So we have all size targets to fit any situation. And like I said, those are no charge to the event coordinators. Um, shotgun event, ideally a sporting clay course is great or something like a sporting clay course. It does not have to be that way. If you are in a smaller club or you're doing it on a farm or a church ground or something like that, if you have a just a single bird thrower, that'll work fine. You just shoot everybody from one station, and they'll all shoot the same bird. If you're working with advanced kids, you may want to change the angle of the birds. If you're working with beginners at a first-time local event, you may want to throw the same bird every time and have them shoot the same target from the same station. That way, they're much better chance of being successful, and they're going to learn to shoot. Um, the muzzleloader event, just what it says, it's a muzzleloader event, open sights only, um, shooting the same type of targets as 22, an action type target or a life side game target. Um, the only thing that should be, should be considered is if you're shooting an action style target, you have to remember you're shooting a muzzleloader, not a 22. A muzzleloader will tear targets up pretty bad unless they're really heavy targets. The archery event, um, can be a walkthrough 3D course, or it can be shot in a field. It can be shot indoors. Um, it could be a single line with three or four targets, and everybody shoots a number of arrows, three or four arrows, and then they rotate until they're all done. So you can set the event up to fit wherever you are. If you're on a farm with no backdrop, you're not comfortable shooting muzzle or a rifle, you can do shotgun, you can do archery, you can do both. Um, so you it's kind of designed so you can make it work wherever or whatever uh, facility you have. The responsibility events, um, orienteering is uh, where participants navigate their way through an orienteering course utilizing map and compass. Again, that is, uh, you have to kind of weigh the, uh, 
the level of participants you think you'll have at a state event. A lot of times the courses are fairly tough. At a beginning event, a first time local event um, where you have a lot of young kids, you want to probably work towards a more basic course, um, maybe with some instruction to teach them how to use a map and compass. Um, Hunter Safety Trail, it, uh, it is just a walkthrough safety trail. It tests skills in firearm safety and handling. Um, you'll cover, you can cover legal issues, responsibility, making educated decisions. This is a really easy thing to set up with just some things that volunteers have around the house. Um, you can do fence crossings, um, safe backgrounds, shoot or no shoot situations where you may have a house behind a target or an orange vest way back in the distance. And then you have safe shooting uh, scenarios where it is safe to shoot. And you have the people, young people walk through and with an instructor or a, um, I guess an event director or an event volunteer, and they would walk them up to a target or a stake and they would tell them there's your target and uh, they would say it's safe or not safe, may cross a fence, make sure they do everything properly. The hunter responsibility, I'm sorry, the wildlife identification. This is an easy event to run. Um, normally a group of people can get together enough items to run a good wildlife identification um, program. And it, it tests kids on the ability ability to identify tracks, hides, feathers, any types of wildlife sign. Um, you can use decoys, um, paper targets, flashcards, of course hides, tracks, antlers, skulls. There's lots of different things you can use and the kids really enjoy that. They, they like walking through and seeing the different things. If you're dealing with advanced kids, if you're doing say 15 or 18 or 20 items, that's fine. They walk through, you number the stations, and they identify what's there. If you have beginners, a lot of times it's a good idea if you're going to do 15 items to have 30 answers on the bottom of the page. And that's up to the host if they want to do that. But that gives young people that are not experienced at it um, some, it gives them a sense of, uh, yeah, just it makes them feel better. They're going to accomplish something. They're going to get all of the spaces filled in. They're going to spell everything correctly. They may not get them all right, but they're not embarrassed when they come up and turn their paperwork in, which is a big deal. We want them to be comfortable. Um, but like I said, if they're more advanced, well, then they have to figure it out on their own. The uh, Hunter Responsibility Exam, it is a written exam or something new, they can go to the NRA online hunter safety exam testing and it'll test them on knowledge of safety, ethics, responsibility, laws, and hunting issues. Um, when you, if you go to the YHEC website, there is a place where you can log on or you can have participants log on and take an online hunter safety exam. It is basically a cut down version of NRA's Hunter, online hunter safety course. And instead of getting a pass fail like you would at a hunter safety course, because this is an online hunter safety exam, they will actually get a score and they print it out and they bring it to the event. Now that will only work if it's a pre-registration event where people have to pre-register. Then they can take their test and bring it with them to the event and be scored on it. Um, if, if, that, if it's not a pre-registered event, then you can use the Hunter's Guide book and do your, do your own written hunter safety exam. Um, you don't want to make it too long. Uh, kids, you know how kids are, they don't want to take written tests all the time. But you do want to test their knowledge. Now some things that are new for 2019. Um, well, let me, let me step back real quick. Um, for people that have not hosted a YHEC event or been involved in the YHEC event, things that NRA will supply besides monetary compensation, which we will get to in a minute, um, we have a materials order form, and on that form are lots of items that we will supply at no charge. There are t-shirts, um, safety ribbon, pencils, score books, bumper stickers, bags to put the supplies in for the kids. Uh, paper targets. We supply lots of items at no charge. 
Um, so everybody there gets gets a nice package, um, and it really adds to the event. And like I said, it is no cost to the uh, host of the event. Now back to Monty, the is there is yep. there a a minimum or a maximum number of participants to to host an event, or can you can you have an event as small as 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 like five youth participants, and then can you have something as large as let's say a hundred? Does it matter? The size matter? No, it doesn't matter. Um, most first-time events will have between 10 and 20 kids. That's generally the average across the board, and they'll grow from there. Occasionally, if we get a homeschool event or a church group that's going to host an event, you may have a lot more kids than that first time out of the gate, but that's pretty unusual. Normally, they start very small, um, and they'll grow as uh, years go on and people hear about it. Uh, top number, it's whatever they can handle. We have several events that have between two and 400 kids in them. Um, Pennsylvania averages 200 a year. They do that event in a day. So um, they can hustle some kids through. They have a great group of volunteers and they're used to doing it. So they can run them through. So uh, there is no top number. It's whatever you're comfortable with, volunteers, um, you think your volunteers can handle and your site can handle. And uh, we have no minimum. If five kids show up, that's five kids they're going to learn. And uh, the next year it'll grow. That's what we generally see across the board. Um, something else new for 2019, and we just talked about this a little bit, at a state level, all Young people must have completed a hunter education course. Something we're allowing this year, starting this year, is they have to have a state hunter education course, or they can take the NRA online hunter education course and show proof of having completed that course. Um, a photocopy is fine. You just need to bring it to you, to the event, and uh, show it to them or turn it into them. And that will meet the qualifications for a hunter ed course. We've done that for several reasons. One is um, a lot of the events are held in the summer and spring. There's not as many hunter ed courses going on. And if a young person decides a week out all of his friends are going and he wants to go, he cannot get in a hunter safety course. He just can't do it. Um, and this will allow kids like that to get uh, good safety training and then show uh, show a certificate that they did go through that. And at a, at a local level event, uh, I mentioned this earlier, the event director may re waive the requirements for Hunter Ed. Um, we've only done that about uh, six or seven years, something fairly new. We used to require Hunter Ed for all levels of YHEC. And the reason we've done this is uh, we had lots of kids and parents calling us. They had moved out into rural areas, never been exposed to hunting, never been exposed to firearms. Their kid goes to the school and all of the kids there hunt. All the kids he's made friends with hunt. They all, they all want to go to the YHEC event. And because the young person has never had hunter ed, his parents are not familiar with firearms and they're probably not going to take him to a hunter ed course. Um, he can attend a local level YHEC event. Um, his parents come along, and uh, we try to encourage people to make them spectator friendly so the parents can see the guidance the kids get and uh, the level of safety that's uh, used during the event. And the vast majority of the times, that family changes over to pro hunting and pro shooting, uh, where they may have been on the fence. And, of course, the kids, they eat it up. They love every minute of it. So at the local level, we can waive hunter ed requirements. It helps with re recruitment and retention of kids, um, gets kids involved that normally would not have been able to get involved in a program like this. And they're eventually, the majority of them are going to end up being hunters. And uh, that's kind of what we're looking for. Amani, you, you keep you've been mentioning state level and local level. What are what are the difference uh, between the two? Who's hosting each one? Who's hosting a local level, and who's able to host a state level? Well, at the uh, if an, if there's only one event in the state, of course we'll ask them if they want to be the state event. 
Um, the only reason I ask them, um, they get more, um, they'll get more compensation money-wise, but it's not a huge amount of money difference. Um, but if there's only one event, we're going to encourage them to be the state event. Um, if there are more than one event, generally there'll be a state event established early on. And as the state grows, like Oklahoma or uh, Florida starting to grow real fast now, um, they get up where they get a state event, then they'll have a local event start and another local event and another local event. And the only difference is the state event is normally the first event in the state. And it is up to us if a state event shrinks and a local event explodes and gets really big, um, we have the option of switching that. We have never done it. We may never do it. But, uh, you know, if, it, if the state event folds or the person hosting the state event decides they don't want to do it anymore, then we'll, we, we will designate a new state event. But uh, there's no real difference in the two. Um, the state event is generally the first event that started. It will grow the most. It will be the largest event generally in the state. And, uh, you know, they because they've done it longer, they start having more events and more events. Eventually, they'll get up to all eight events, which we really like to see at the state level. Um, so there is no real difference. There's no requirement that makes a difference. Um, normally, it's the first state in the state or the first event in the state we will designate as a state event. Something else new for 2019, we have, um, for people that have been involved in the program, we have a new logo. Um, these are the logos, um, vertical and horizontal, different colors that they can come in. You can make them any color you want. Um, and if, if you're already involved in the program and you're using our old logo, that's fine. If you're designing anything new, we encourage you to use a new logo. Um, if you're going to change your website or the artwork on your trailer or wherever you may have something, uh, there again, we encourage you to use the new, uh, the new logo, the YHEC logo. Here's a big one for 2019. We're getting a lot of calls on this. Um, it sounds like it's going to be a great success. We are announcing there will be an East and West Regional NRA Youth Hunter Education Challenge Championships for 2019. This is something new. This is kind of the, this is our test project here. It's the first one we will do. Um, and the way we chose these two states is they just stepped up and said, hey, we would like to host a regional or a large event. And uh, we chose the first two to do it. We had several other states approach us about it. Um, we didn't want to get too big right out of the gate. And as you can see here, the red states are the eastern. We'll go to the eastern event. The tan states will go to the western event. Um, you cannot, participants cannot cross over from the east to the west or the west to the east. We have lots of, you know, several reasons that we chose to do it that way. Um, and one of them is uh, we don't want somebody to go through all the work of hosting an event and a lot of the people go to the other event in their area. Um, we tried to figure it out where it would, we thought from participation over the years they would be fairly even. Obviously, the West area is much larger. Um, the population density is not there. Um, some of the western states, we don't have as much participation as we do in the east. And like I said, in places like Wyoming and Idaho, they're so spread out. Um, there may be one or two events in the state, and the vast majority of kids do not attend it because of the drive. It's just, it's just so far for them to attend an event. So that's kind of why we divided it up the way we did. A um, little bit about those events, the Eastern Regional, the Eastern Regional event will take place July 10 through 13 of 2019. It'll be held in the host state of New York. Um, the event will be held at the Chemung Rod and Gun Club in Breezeport, New York. Um, anybody that has participated at a national level event in Mansfield, Pennsylvania, this is just north of there. Uh, 
30 to 40 minutes maybe. Um, so that kind of gives you an idea where it is. It's on the lower center part of New York. Um, the eastern regional will include a north-south boundary of states that include Florida, Georgia, North Carolina, Virginia, West Virginia, Ohio, and all states east of that boundary line. The registration fee will be $250 for participants and coaches. Um, YHEC event leaders and volunteers will be encouraged to attend and help conduct these regional events. Um, registration forms will be available and it's at sullivansharpshooters.org. I know for a fact the volunteer forms are out. Um, the participant form may have come out recently, but the volunteer forms are out. Um, for more information regarding the East Regional Youth Hunter Education Challenge event, you can contact Richard Lathrop. Richard is the New York State Coordinator, um, very experienced in YHEC. Um, of course, his number is 607-425-4207 or rrlathrop72 at gmail.com. Or you can contact me here at NRA. Um, phone number there, 703-267-1503 or membry at nrahq.org. And again, down at the bottom there, participants may only attend the regional event in the region where they reside. Um, the Western Regional. The Western Regional event will take place July 24 through 26, 2019 and be held in the host state of Arkansas. The event will take place at the Benton County Quail Facility in Bentonsville, New York. I'm sorry, Bentonville, Arkansas. Um, for those that don't know, it's up in the top western corner of the state. Um, the West Region will include a north-south boundary of states that include Michigan, Indiana, Kentucky, Tennessee, Mississippi, and all states west of that boundary line. The registration fee for competitors and coaches will be $300. National YHEC event leaders and volunteers will be encouraged to attend and help conduct the regional events. And all regional forms will be sent out in mid-March. There again, I know that uh, Gary Job, the host of that event, has got the volunteer forms done and uh, he may have the participant forms done. We did an email blast announcing these regional events to prior event hosts, state coordinators, and participants from the last few year national events. And uh, apparently they're getting a great response. We also um, sent that email blast to volunteers from the national events. So he's getting, they're getting great response for volunteers and participants. I think they're going to be big events. Um, so if you have an interest, you want to contact them and possibly get, uh, kind of get on the stick as far as getting reservations. I don't, they both have a good infrastructure. I don't think it's going to be tough to get a place to get a room, but they have, uh, I think they've both done a little homework and have, uh, rec they'll recommend some hotels that are reasonably priced for the event. And again, participants can only attend a regional event in a region where they reside. Expanding the YHEC program. Um, NRA is working hard to expand the YHEC program across, across the country. Um, we send out email blasts to NRA members for any upcoming event to increase participation. So if you register an event with us, we will do an email blast to NRA members in the area of your event, letting them know about the event. And it definitely helps increase your participation. Um, everybody notices when that email blast goes out, they'll get a big increase in uh, calls. We also can send out email blasts for event events, for WIAC events that need volunteers. Um, sometimes, People are afraid to host an event because they don't have enough volunteers or they're hosting events and it's they're growing and it's getting a little overwhelming. They need some more volunteers. Um, we started doing this about four years ago for, for events that request it. We don't do it for everybody. And we've had great response. Um, generally, they're NRA members um, that are experienced in shooting and hunting. 
Um, they've always been great volunteers and done a phenomenal job for the hosts. Um, they've relieved a lot of stress and pressure off of the hosts, getting a good group of volunteers. Um, as some of you know, at NRA, all of our programs survive on good volunteer work. Um, we don't have enough uh, staff to even come close to running all the programs we have out in the field. And uh, the majority of that work out in the field is done by volunteers. Um, and uh, we are very fortunate we get great volunteers generally. Um, as I mentioned, well, I don't know if I mentioned it earlier, but we are increasing the subsidy payments for state YHIC events. It had been $10 per four participants in the past. Now we will send you $15 per participant you estimate will be there. Um, we are also increasing the local events or adding the local events. We have never provided subsidy payment to local events in the past. We will now give them $10 per participant. Um, this can be a great help. The way we work it is you give us an estimated number of participants. You will have to send in a W-9 tax form and we will send you a check going by your, nat, your estimated number of participants. The following year, when you, later that year, you send in a report from your event with how many participants were there, and the following year we will adjust your payment according to what you had the year before and what you estimate for the next year. Um, now quarterly, throughout the year, at least quarterly, we will send out email blasts to over 3,500 clubs and associations promoting the YHEC program while trying to recruit new groups to host an event. Um, this has been by far our best promoter of the YHEC program. Um, we hit every club we can find, um, from NRA affiliated clubs, which is a big number, to archery clubs, muzzleloader clubs, sportsmen's clubs, um, trap clubs, youth shooting clubs, anything we can find. We will send out information on the YHEC program. Um, we always get a good number of calls and emails right after we do that. And like anything, you weed through them and you finally get down to you know a handful that will start hosting an event. And that is how we, that is by far our best, best promoter. Um, we also promote the YHEC program at shows, uh, retail stores, through articles and magazines, newspapers, anywhere we can get the word out. Um, we have state coordinators across the country. They will attend some events. Um, they attend some retail stores and promote the program, and they do a very good job for us. Um, we are also always looking for new ways to promote the YHEC program. So if any of you have any ideas or you have somebody that's interested in the YHEC program, have them contact me at NRA. Uh, my contact information is right there. Um, we're all ears. There's always a better way to build a mousetrap. Um, we have tried just about everything you can think of in our minds to promote the program, but there's always something new out there. So if anybody has any ideas or has somebody that has any interest in hosting a program, please have them get a hold of me. Um, and that is basically the presentation. Um, so, Monty, so if a club doesn't have you know much much money to to host programs they can apply for the subsidy um payment so that to help offset the costs right so Absolutely. so basically um, any, any any club can do it. it doesn't matter if you if you if you you know have are rich or or do not have a lot of money anybody can do it right yeah anybody can host a YHEC event um like i said we will provide some subsidy money um we have lots of them that do fundraisers things like that um in their local area, they try to get sponsors, which a lot of them have success doing. And they can also apply for a Friends of NRA grant. Um, that is a great program. Um, a big portion of our YHEC hosts apply for those grants and receive them. There's no guarantee you'll get one, but generally across the board, we do very well. And that helps, um, helps subsidize those events, uh, makes it where there's no cost to the club. Um, you can charge kids to attend your event. We have some that do. Ideally, we'd like it where they do not have to charge. Um, but if you have to charge a little bit of money, then that's what you have to do. But uh, 
the the big thing that we encourage them to, and I'm glad you brought it up, son, is to apply for the Friends of NRA grants. Um, they do a great job, and uh, it's always good for that money to go back into the community. And are clubs able to host an event multiple times a year, or can you only do it once, or is it suggested to do one or two, or, is it, or based on what you, you're able to, to do? It's basically based on what you're able to do. We have no restriction. Um, Places like uh, Oklahoma and places like that, they have a core group, a state coordinator and four or five volunteers that travel around the state and they may, they'll host five to seven events all around the state and they'll travel around and set everyone up and they have volunteers recruited in each area. They have a local person that will get involved with them and they'll let them recruit local event, local volunteers. And then this group of four or five will just roll in there and instruct everybody what to do and help them set the event. And it goes very well. Um, but there is no restriction. Um, we have some clubs that do two events. Um, we don't have a lot of them that do that. We have lots of clubs and groups that do practice sessions preparing for events, and we do encourage that. Um, we have some groups that will start in January and have practice once a week all the way to their state event, or now with the regional events coming in, they're gonna do it for regional events. And it's not just practicing to win anything, it's teaching the kids to be better marksmen, better sportsmen, um, they might study book work one night, they may do first aid one night. So these kids are getting a lot of advanced training and hunting and things they could use out in the field. And they, they're having fun, so they don't even realize the knowledge they're they're receiving from these volunteers. Um, generally across the board, when a, if a young person has got involved in an early age at YHEC and went all the way through and aged out, they are so much safer than the average hunter in the field because they have worked at it for years. Um, all of the coaches that I see involved with these kids obviously stress safety number one and uh, really are dedicated to teaching these kids. So if you get a group that's that dedicated where they'll have practice groups throughout the year, and then they bring them to a state. Um, that is the ideal situation for us. And we love to see that just because the kids are are just so advanced. Um, they learn so much and it changes their lives. Um, they learn respect, they learn how to work with others. Um, a lot of times uh, local law enforcement will be involved in these events, uh, game wardens, and uh, they start, they get to talk to them um, you realize that they're just average people, very nice, they get along great with them, and it changes their outlook on things. Um, they don't worry when they see one coming up in the field, they, they enjoy it, they're looking forward to talking to it. So it's a, it's a great learning experience all the way around for these kids. So Monty, if a club currently doesn't have many uh, youth or, or kids uh, in their in their clubs and their shooting programs, would you say that hosting a YHEX is a a start or a great way to get more youth involved and in introduced to the shooting sports? Yeah, it absolutely is. Um, as I was talking earlier, you know, we, I have seen, physically seen it many times at a local level event or a state level event, new kids come into the program um, that are not very experienced. Their parents have no experience. And by the end of the program, their parents are asking how to join the club. How can they be involved with the club? Do they have any other programs for kids? Um, and most clubs are excited to see that. They, you know, they obviously know youth are the future of their club and our shooting sports and hunting. So um, they really like to see that. And they don't have to have a youth program. Um, but if they host an event, we'll send an email blast out and they do some local grassroots promoting. Um, we'll send them posters they can put out in local gun shops and retail stores. Um, we'll list them on our website. Uh, we'll do the email blast. We'll do all we can do to help promote it at a large scale level, and then they have to do some grassroots work. But they'll be surprised how many kids will start showing up. They all have to have their parents with them, and uh, it can help the club grow, and it can definitely help uh, them grow, either start a youth program or grow their youth programs. And I, and I think you touched on this 
uh, briefly a little bit earlier, Monty, that hosting one of these, hosting a YHEC program can you know, put like a, a positive image for for a club in, within their community, right? They can, they'll, they'll probably show up in like the local newspaper, the news, and I think I've seen some of some articles where clubs have shown up and, and there's some positive feedback from the community. Yeah, we get, uh, it's surprising how much of that we see. Um, we encourage event hosts or anybody involved with the event to uh, send anything that comes out like that. And I will get numerous articles every year in local papers um, or just notes where they had them on a talk show or the local news came out to their event. Um, so the, the uh, community really appreciates it. Um, they love to see the kids getting involved. Um, it's all about safety, so that's obviously a very positive note. And uh, it's good to get the publicity for hunters and uh, sportsmen like that. But, uh, yeah, the local communities really embrace this program generally. I mean, we have groups that have their grocery stores donating hot dogs and hamburgers for lunches and um, just support from all over the place. Um, it's really good to see. We also see uh, information or about the program articles in the uh, wildlife magazines from each state. Most states have, most state agencies have a outdoor magazine, uh, Colorado Outdoors, uh, North Carolina has them, just about all states, Texas. We get them all here and throughout the year, I'll open one up and there'll be an article in there about the local YHEC event um, and how positive it was for the area. And, and for the state, um, what is, you know, the good things it's done for young people. So obviously it's, it's uh, very well supported by the local communities and they really like to see it. Fantastic. Well, Monty, thank, thanks for, for joining us today. If anyone has questions, um, how, can, how can they get in contact with you, Monty? Is there a website? Call, is the best way that your email, phone number? Yeah, they can call me here at... Uh, NRA anytime at 703-267-1503 or me, email me at m-e-m-b-r-e-y at n-r-a-h-q.org. Um, they can also go to the YHEC website, which is just uh, nrayheck.org. All right. Well, thanks. Thanks, Monty. Uh, thanks for having us. Thanks for joining us and, uh, and giving all this great information. Thank you, son. I appreciate everybody uh, logging on and listening to the webinar. And like I say, if you have any questions, please uh, get in touch with me. Thank you, everyone. That concludes our webinar for today. If you have any questions and you want to follow up with us, uh, Monty has given his information. Monty Embry, 703 one five zero three. His email address is membry at nrahq.org. And if you have any questions or you want to have suggestions for future webinars and, and things that you want to hear about, email us for the clubs and associations team at clubs at nrahq.org. The email address again is clubs at nrahq.org. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, Monty. Have a good day. Sure. Thank you.